What's going on guys, I'm Sholm2 with the Skewed Few 3D and this is Unreal Engine 4. Today we're going to be going over creating materials that are easily adjustable within your project so that you can tile them, offset them, and also rotate them. For those that are already experienced with Unreal Engine, here's an image of the blueprint setup. And now we'll be going over how to create this. So right click in your content browser, click on material, this will create a new material. We're going to go ahead and name this parent material. And when you first open it up, this is what you're going to see. So these are all the input values for your material. Right now, you see over here in the viewport, it just shows up as black because nothing is input yet. So we have a multitude of different values that we can input from base color, metallic maps, roughness maps, whatever you need in your material you can create here. So I have two different material setups here three maps for each one. One's a wood mosaic texture and then another one is a damaged metal texture. You can find the links for these down in the description. These are free to download and use. These were pulled from textures.com. I'll put the links to these down in the description so you can download them and follow along. So I'm going to grab all three of the wood mosaic textures and bring them into the material window. Now I'll plug them into their respective inputs. So for the normal map I'll plug it into the normal input. For the roughness map, plug it into the roughness, and then for your color image, plug it into base color. So now we already have a basic material set up, except there's no way for us to yet be able to adjust this, to scale this, offset it, or rotate it. Right now, it's just a material, you apply it to something, and then that's how it is. So first thing we want to do, before anything else, is make sure that you right click on your textures and hit convert the parameter and name them accordingly. So for the first one, I'll name it color. For the roughness map, I'll name it roughness. And then for the normal, I'll name it normal. So what this does, what a parameter does, is when you come over here into your content browser again, and you right click on your parent material, you can hit create material instance. This will create an instance of this material, so you can change the values of this material without having to actually go back into the original parent tree. So you see over here on the right side, now that these are all parameters, we can change these to whatever we want them to be. So if I say, let's change this to gold, for example, now it comes out as gold. And I can change the normal map, the roughness map. So you can close out that. I'm just gonna delete this. We'll create a new one once we're further along. So that's what a parameter does, it sets it up where you go into an instance and then you can easily change the values based upon what parameters you've set up. So for the first thing that we're going to set up, we're going to set up UV scaling. What that is, is basically this texture that we have right here. This is on a UV grid, which is essentially an XY coordinate system. So if I wanted to scale this and say, have a be two times, then you would see this texture except in a 2x2 two two square area. So it becomes smaller and you get much more detail within this space. So first thing that we're going to need, you can right click and pull up the search menu and type in texture coordinate and we'll grab that node. This node basically tells the system, it's already set up here, you can see in the details on the left side, that is set up for UV tiling. So you can input a value into both the U and V, and then when you apply it to your material, when you hook up your nodes like this, you'll see here when I apply this material into the editor, as now shown in here. So if I were to go back into this material and change the tiling to 0.25 for each of these instead, save this out. 2,000 years later and now got much larger. Now the reason why when we create these parameters and you create these material instances, the reason why you use material instances is so that you don't have to go into this tree each and every time to change the values firstly. And secondly, when you save these materials, it tends to take at least 10 seconds each time, whereas a material instance is instantaneous. So you can just apply this instance into the world and change it on the fly and you can see it update in real time. So if I were to open this up, bring this over here to this window. 
Say I wanted to take texture on it and make it something else. So let's make it another wood. You can see it updates here in real time. So to create a parameter using this, I cannot convert this texture coordinate node to parameter. What we have to do instead is create two constant nodes. You can do such by holding one on your keyboard and left clicking. And then you convert these to a parameter. So for this first one, I'll name it utiling. And for the second one, I'll name it vtiling. Then right click and search for append vector. What this does is it takes both of these and maintains the values that each of them have but makes it so that they only have one output so that they can plug into something. Otherwise you have two outputs here and you only have one input on another node. Now we will need a multiply node which we can bring in by holding M and left clicking. We want to place our append node into the multiply node and then our texture coordinate node also into the multiply node. What this does is it takes the texture coordinate plugs it into this node, and then whatever else is plugged into this node will automatically apply the values to this texture coordinate. So instead of applying these values that it has here, it's going to instead apply these values from these separate constants. So if I input 1 and 1, and then plug this into each of the UV inputs, You can see in here now, we have the utiling and the v-tiling as parameters. So we can easily adjust these on the fly. So if I set these to, say, 0.2, it makes the te texture much larger. Uh, you don't really see much detail in the viewport, but when you put it into your world, you'll see it. So this is the parent material right now, and here's the instance that we have. So if I take this instance, drag it over to the side, and adjust these values, you can see in real time that I am adjusting the scale of these UVs. Now that we have our scaling nodes set up, what we can do to keep this tree organized, if you press C, you'll create a comment. And what this is, is this is essentially a window in which you can place nodes and group them. So I'll name this one Texture Scaling. I'll apply a color to it, so let's say like a cyan. I'll make the window the same size as my nodes, and then drag it right over top of them. And now when I drag this comment around, all the nodes within it also move with it. This is incredibly useful if you're making a bunch of materials, or your trees are incredibly complex, and you want to keep it organized, that way you know what is where. Because many times in your projects, you'll make incredibly complex materials, and when you open it back up at a later date, you're not going to know what is where. It's going to be all over the place. And this also helps other people if you were to pass your materials along to someone else. If they open it up, they're not going to know what is what. So now we have our texture scaling set up here, already organized and plugged into all of our nodes. Next, we will be going over UV offsets. So this is incredibly useful if you set up UV maps and then apply the texture to it, but you don't like the location that the material is in, so you can easily adjust it based upon the U and the V axis. So to set that up, it's gonna be the same sort of base setup. You hold one, left click to bring in basic constant vectors. Create another append vector node. Plug them into it. Convert these to parameters, that way they show up in your material instances. So for this I'll put UV offset and then V offset. So now if I create an add node, which you can do so by holding A and left clicking, and I plug this into the B and our texture coordinate into the A, this is very similar to the tiling except multiply will create the scaling factor and add will simply have it move along the U axis or the V axis based upon negative or positive input. So if I were to plug this into all of our UVs, 
save this out and then open up our material instance. You'll see here now we have our U offset parameter and our V offset. So now if I adjust these, you'll see that the texture actually moves along each axis. Now if you want to combine both the texture scaling and the offset into one material, you simply plug in the multiply node, your final node, within the scaling and just plug that directly into your A instead. So now when you go back into your material instance, you'll see now that we have all four parameters here set up. Now I will add another comment. I'll name this one texture offset. I'll make this one a pinkish color. Adjust the window size so that it fits around all of your nodes. Place it over top of it and then now you can move this around freely and have it stay organized. This add node is separate because this add node is combining both of these together and then going from there inputting into each of your textures. So now that we can scale our textures and also move our textures, right click within your material, type in custom rotator, bring in this node, connect it to your multiply into the UVs. Now we want to create a constant two factor. You can do so by holding two and left clicking. What this does is it inputs two separate variables. So a constant one factor like these it's just a single digit, that's it. Constant two factor is two digits along a coordinate system. So plug this into your rotation center. These values essentially mean this is where the center of rotation will be. So at zero, zero, it's gonna be at zero, zero on your grid. So zero on the U axis and then zero on the V axis. If I put this at one and one, it's gonna be at the complete opposite corner at one on the U axis, one on the V axis. So if we want it dead center, we want to input 0.5 and 0.5. Now we want to add a constant one factor. Hold one on your keyboard, left click, and put that into the rotation angle. Now the angle of rotation goes from zero to one. So if we want a 45 degree angle, we would input 0.25. And then you simply just take the output from your rotator and plug it into your A on your add. So now your scaling and rotation is coming from the same node section. I'll create a new comment here, name this texture rotation. Scale it accordingly. And then we'll change the color to like a, an orange. You wanna convert your constant factor that you plugged into here into a parameter. That way you can adjust it in your material instances. So I'm just going to name this rotation, save that out, and now we have three different variables set up, each with their own parameters. So we'll go back into the editor. So now when you go into your material instance, you'll see each of these parameters set up. So now we have rotation, offset, tiling, and then we can also change each of these maps. So if I want to rotate this texture by 90 degrees, you can input 0.5 maintain it how it is at zero you can just do zero 180 degrees for one and then for 45 degrees 0.25 we'll put this on cube in the viewport and now you can see as i'm adjusting this it's rotating the texture and then now we can also offset the texture offset it vertically offset it horizontally and when you offset this, it will offset based upon your rotation. So if you have this at zero, it will go along the grid in line. But if you rotate this, it will offset based upon what angle it's facing. So that's how you create a parent material to be able to create an infinite number of material instances that are all flexible and adjustable in their own rights for whatever you need. This is incredibly useful if you're modeling stuff and you create UV maps and bring it in and you don't like how the texture applies to that model. Uh, most of the time you'd have to go back into your program, readjust the mesh, readjust your UV maps and then bring it back in. But this way here, everything's done in Unreal Engine in real time and you can see exactly what it's going to look like without having to change any sort of UV maps. Hope you guys found this useful. If you want to learn anything else, 
or if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down below in the comments. We're happy to answer anything. We'll be releasing more tutorials in the near future for not only Unreal Engine, but also Maya, SketchUp, and Fusion 360. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you subscribe so that you stay up to date with that. If you're interested in seeing more of what we do, check out our website, which will also be down in the description, along with links to our social media and also places where we post our own custom models. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time.